Hey y'all, War 5 here. Funnily enough, due to some turnover, we were actually planning this one with 9. Um, but luckily there wasn't too much path splitting. We're gonna start here on this Kitty Pride with uh, a regen boost active. And that was mainly because I expected some block damage early, and it just seemed like a good idea. I will say I do have something of a bad habit of going for an intercept against Kitty when she's at her most rhino, like you see right there. I actually don't even think I was going for an intercept there. I think that was me getting ready to go hit her block. And just, I don't know, this tends to happen when I fight her. <laughs> I'm over it. As long as it only happens once, it's just a potion thing. But the important part of this fight is obviously just that Kitty is a mutant, and so this is a full ramp on Apocalypse without having to bring Cable or do any other shenanigans. Just instant, full power. That obviously crit enough, because Apocalypse has a terrible crit rate unless he is facing somebody who doesn't want him to crit. This is known. It is what it is. Um, but there's really not much danger to this. As you can see, two specials, and it's over. She doesn't have that much health, and a rank 4 apocalypse is kind of good. Now, the funny thing about that regen boost is that Mantis, as a skill champion, is looking for prowess and regen to shut her stuff off. So, apocalypse with a regen boost actually turns off basically all of her abilities. Um... I'm not going to lie and say this was completely intentional and why I threw on the regen boost, but I was thinking about it before I entered the fight, at least. <laughs> so it was nice to have that in mind. But that's part of why I also went and got these debuffs up immediately, because I knew that as soon as this regen goes away, um, her tranquilize will come back. So I need to be a little bit careful about that. There she goes and throws the special one out of nowhere, as she loves to do. But this is where the other part of Apocalypse being a good counter comes in. Psh, me charging into her heavy is definitely not part of that. But the fact that we have prowess means that we can throw a special um, wherever we want on the encroaching sleep timer and get rid of it. We don't have to make sure that the timer actually expires during our special animation like somebody else would need to. So, really solid counter to that first bit. And then we head into this uh, infamous Iron Man here. We're just using Doom for this. I could use a number of different options, but Doom with Reed on the team is going to be able to armor break out of the gate. Although I should have just parry heavied instead of doing that medium heavy nonsense because he was shock immune while he had his armor. And I did not uh, actually have the freedom to throw that heavy. So almost ate a combo, but that is kind of the other reason that we're here because Doom is immune to shock and has very high armor, which Infamous Iron Man has no way of getting through because he can't crit <laughs> and he can't do anything to somebody with a bunch of armor and shock immunity on defense. So we get the armor break up, we're keeping the staggers up. I'm basically not worried at all about him ever having access to most of his abilities again. The regen will happen towards the end, but that is another thing that we're hopefully going to stagger if we can. It's just a matter of trying to keep these up as we go. I probably should have heavied there and then immediately thrown the special two. Yeah, I definitely should have done that. Because then that would have staggered the regen, and that would have been that last stagger that we needed. I just wasn't thinking quite enough ahead, but we haven't gotten rooted here. We've kept the armor off, and then as he charges us right here, there's our special two. It doesn't have the Fury, but those Incinerates still do pretty good damage. Then he barely has enough left. Happens to root us. I guess, I don't know, we'll take the Willpower healing. And there we go. Pretty simple fight here. He's not Tactic, so you don't have to worry about him going red or anything along those lines. You just kind of need to use somebody who doesn't die to his aura. Plenty of options there. So we move on to Sauron here with Apocalypse. 
People will often send Nimrod to him. There are a lot of options, but really you just need to be able to play around his unblockable. And then he can kind of be taken with anyone. So he starts with this right away. Gonna go ahead and hit him through block to push him over a bar because I prefer to trigger his unblockable when he's throwing a special as opposed to when he dashes. I just tend to feel safer that way. Um, yeah, there we go. I knew I was going to go for at least one intercept. This is going fine. The special one is not ideal against him because he is uh, poison immune, but it still does a little bit of damage, and we were able to lock in uh, some benefit from that fury from the intercept. We get another one right here. I was completely fine with um, going for that intercept because either we got credit for it and got the fury, or he'd probably block, we'd hit into his block, stun him, and refresh the weakness. Either one was an acceptable outcome. As you can see, basically every one of his special ones has been unblockable, and we just deal with it afterwards. See, there's exactly what I was talking about. It's safe to go for the intercept because Apocalypse can just stun through block if not. Either way, you get something for it. But this is just a really safe fight with Apocalypse. Oh look, we actually turned off the note at the end there with the concussion. I took that last fight and this next one actually at about 2 a.m. after uh, a fun Saturday out. Went and saw a comedy show downtown. downtown. Finally saw Ant-Man. Please don't spoil it for anybody else in the comments. Just obligatory. Um, and so that last one, I was feeling like, yeah, it's late at night, but I was super on top of that. Multiple intercepts, played around the unblockable, I am in the zone. And that fantasy came crashing down in this fight, <laughs> as you are about to see. I was trying to go for intercepts, not for the fury, but just to remove um, Nova's fury. That is how I tend to play him, is go for intercepts early and just remove that problem. But good lord, was he not playing ball. I he just went like 500 IQ on there hit into my block, waited for me to do something, and then hit again. Good lord. I... <laughs> it's a good thing that Doom is a tank, but I wasn't really feeling amazing about that at the moment here, because <sighs> Doom being a tank only matters if you're winning the HP race, and for the first 20 seconds of that or so, I was decidedly not. But this is at least going to do a ton of damage because we still have the Fury from Ebb and Flow as well as the new one we're getting. We're going to do a bunch here. We're going to throw this. It's going to send him unblockable. That's how Nova works. Very weird that it sent him unblockable after the end of the hit when he was sitting at 100. I actually didn't know that he worked like that or I don't know. I'm going to go look at the code later. But... Um, that was actually a bit of a mistake, throwing the special two there. What I should have done is wait for him to come in and throw a heavy. And then I should have gotten back up to my special two, and I probably could have finished it right there. Get caught going for the intercept again. He is just refusing to let me play ball the way that I want to. Oh well. Alright, we get rid of the fury... And I think at this point I just decide I'm done. Throw this. It'll be fine. Just an absolute disaster of a fight that is fully leaning on the fact that Doom has way too high base stats. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Anyway, speaking of Doom, we move on to the main reason that I brought Apocalypse uh, for this fight right here. Reminder that Conflictor is itself a kind of Purify. Apocalypse reduces Purify ability accuracy. And so he can not only take this node um, himself without worrying about it, but he can take advantage of Mr. Fantastic pre-fights. And so we can throw this Petrify on, and as long as we maintain it, Doom doesn't have access to his aura. The House of X pre-fight um, is not necessary here. It is allowing me to play around Prowess Puncture slightly more easily, but honestly, I kind of prefer the fight without it because I don't have access to the Petrify Mastery on the passive stun the way I do with an active one. It's kind of six one, half a dozen the other. 
I feel like it's it's kind of working against me mechanically, but mentally it's one less thing for me to focus on. So like I said, trade-off. But that's not really the important thing to call out here. The important thing to call out here is that we are able to apply all of these debuffs. Notice after that last one, I just decided I'm blocking the special ones. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's a Sunday morning. I'm just going to block these. I'm not using Apocalypse again. And there we go. We had power backs running, but we didn't even need them because I think it was worth throwing the first special one to get the extra debuffs up. And then by the time we got to a special one again, it killed. So really, in my opinion, far and away the best counter there. I don't think it's even close. And then we move on to this Mephisto here. I was not assigned this originally. We had a blade. Um, but just due to coordination, that was going to get kind of hairy. And so I decided, eh, no time like the present to try a new fight. It all makes sense on paper, right? This basically just comes down to how often do we trigger aura? Do we trigger aura? Uh, reminder, we are not ever going to reverse his power gain. Reed's uh, ability power rate reduction caps out at 120%. This node sits at 300% for its base. So you still have almost double the normal whenever Mephisto gains his aura of incineration. Now... That is why I invulned for this. Um, I was prepared to eat multiple special threes. I think I also threw on a special three defense boost. I absolutely love putting on an invuln and then having two parries fail in a row. Three parries fail in a row. <laughs> Four parries fail in a row. Five parries fail in a row. <laughs> I I promise I know how to parry Mephisto, guys. I, I know where the button is. Anyway, um, yeah, love losing my indestructible boost to that. And so at that point, I was like, well, I gotta stay really on top of the baiting, but I'm glad I'm at least fully ramped at this point. We also got a little bit lucky. We've only seen a single aura proc. Reminder that between inequity and Reed's energy resistance, I was not even a little bit worried about dying to it. Um, we just needed to make sure that we didn't eat multiple special threes boosted by Aspect of Evolution. And we didn't. So yay, that absolutely works. I would be happy to send it again. I don't think I would send like a rank three against a rank four Mephisto, but my rank five against a rank four Mephisto any day would happily do that again. Made life easier. Good to know it works. So that was my war. Um, obviously some interesting fights on my side. I really enjoyed this one. Besides that Nova fight, I don't know. He was being a jerk. It was 2 a.m. Water under the bridge. But besides that, I mentioned that we assigned with nine people. Um, our tenth was around and threw on some pre-fights, but I don't think it actually swayed any of them, which was nice. And those nine um, did get a donut. So that was our first perfect clear of the season. No deaths at all. Really proud of the group for that. Um, we did win the war overall, but yeah, just super happy with BG3's performance there. And looking forward to the rest of the season. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.